Hey, this is Matt Ertz, your Madison County historian. We are continuing our series talking to different people that have been impacted by COVID-19. We're really lucky today to have the Village of Mayor, uh, Village of Hamilton Mayor, uh, Ruth Ann Loveless with us today. Uh, Ruth Ann, thanks for joining us. You can give us a little bit of a unique perspective. You've actually had and recovered from COVID-19. Could you talk a little bit about what having it was like? Yes. Uh, yeah, Matt, I, I'm happy to. Um, I do want to say, uh, before I begin talking specifically about that, is that I felt it was really, really important uh, to be very open about the fact that I had contracted it. And we sent out a, um, uh, an announcement actually on the 23rd of March saying that I had been tested and I had been uh, in close proximity to someone who did indeed have it. And uh, we wanted the village to know that. At the same time, the Madison County Health Department put all of my um, direct reports, not, not the direct reports, because they don't all report directly to me, but all my department heads who I had had a meeting with shortly before that, uh, in quarantine in a sense. They were to stay quarantined for two weeks. Um, on the 25th, my test results came back and I was positive. And at that point, we had to really ramp things up in the village a little more seriously about how to proceed. And I was scared to death that someone else uh, would contract it, you know, because of me and uh, was very worried about that. The good news is no one did. But we took a lot of precautions that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, quite frankly, it was brutal. You know, I was looking back at our first announcements that we made and it said, luckily my symptoms were uh, not severe. They became very severe. I had, uh, I had probably a week to 10 days that I literally could not function. I couldn't read an email. I couldn't watch a TV program. Uh, I could do nothing. So ne it's needless to say, my involvement with the village at that time was limited or non-existent. Uh, Jim Stokes, who is our lawyer and also does administrative duties, he, did, he called me every day. Uh, I was able to chat briefly with him. I take my hat off to him and praise him immensely. He kept everything running. One of the things that we did, uh, as I said, the department heads have been quarantined, but we're a small village, so we have small teams of workers. The, the worst thing that could happen for us as a village is, is if someone got it in the DPW and then all of a sudden everyone got it, you know, and we could provide no services. So we started a two-week furlough program and we did this with our electric, we did it with the DPW on a limited basis with our wastewater treatment plant workers. Um, and we said half are on furlough for two weeks, the other half are working and then you alternate that so that you always had half of the staffs that in a sense you hoped were safe because they weren't contracting it from anyone else, you know, who was working. Um, the village, I, I can't tell you how lucky I am in terms of the staff here. They all stepped up, um, our village office closed, but those who work in the village office worked at home, they kept everything going. Um, they took the whole quarantine thing very seriously, which was incredibly important. But I feel like the village almost didn't miss a step. Now, a couple of things, um, people, any mail that comes in, uh, we now have someone who's usually working in the village office, even though it's closed, but they can do it at safe distancing. Any mail that comes in is sprayed and it's uh, disinfected. It's not looked at for 24 hours. Uh, people, when any of us come in, we take our shoes off, we have masks on, uh, we stay away from one another. Uh, a lot of very safe precautions are taken. The experience I had was terrible. And I know that there are so many people out there who had it worse than I had it. I never needed a ventilator. And I can't even imagine putting on top of all the symptoms that I had, uh, the ability not to breathe, to be able to not breathe. I, it, it, it's inconceivable to me how anyone can survive that. And, you know, my message to everyone is 
this is very serious. You can't take it lightly. We have to do everything we can to curtail the spread and to keep people safe. And um, the messages that we sent out to the community, I always tried to have that as part of the message because I wanted to be an example to say, look, I lived it. I know what it's like, and you don't want to have to go through it. So the incredible thing is my husband did not test positive. And uh, I had to be in complete isolation on the second floor of my house for two weeks. So I was completely by myself. And uh, I did have someone, he's older, I did have someone coming in helping him with some things who would sort of leave me some food at the top of the stairs. But I was so sick, I barely wanted anything for most of that time. I have completely recovered. I feel like I am the luckiest person in the world. And I just went up to the uh, Upstate Research Center and they've tested my blood. And I am completely free and clear because I'm hoping now, and they said that I can, give plasma to help others who are suffering through it. That's awesome. Um, first of all, we're so glad that you're healthy again. You Thank went, you. talked about the response of the village. How did the communication work? If you're ill and you, you reference Jim Stokes, so people are talking on the phone through stuff like this, Skype or, or, or Zoom or whatever, and, and the village is more or less running operationally from outside the office with everybody just kind of working together? Yes, and Jim is the one who uh, was in touch with everybody, coordinating all the efforts, so, sort of, um, outlining what needed to be done. We have wonderful department heads. They're all very experienced. They knew how to pick up the pieces and sort of run with it. I think most people in the village, even though they, they expected to have either slower or lesser services during this time, uh, very understanding of it. And I think, quite frankly, everyone was surprised that there was not a lot of change. You know, we provide a lot of services for our residents and we're very proud of that. And we always get compliments and thank yous for that. And again, I think that all of our staff really stepped up and did the best they could and kept things moving in a good way. But Jim really took over as the leader of the pack in a sense. Uh, he was in touch with everyone daily and making sure that things were proceeding as they should. As I said, he would call me uh, daily. Um, I was coherent some of the time, <laughs> but I knew things were in good hands and am forever grateful for that. Wonderful. Talk a little bit about the village itself and how the communities rallied because we all know that, that business are, businesses are closed and struggling. We know that families are struggling. We know that everybody's kind of looking for daycare and help with, with their kids and their students. Um, you know, Everyone right now is, 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 is having a hard time. Talk a little bit about what you've seen in, in the village and how it's rallied. Yeah, you know, for the first couple of weeks, I was completely out of it and I had no, uh, no really indication of what was happening. Although I have to say, people were incredible to me in terms of reaching out, having concern, uh, dropping food by, I mean, a lot of things like that. It, it really uh, warmed my heart and I'm going to start to cry, but was, you know, the, the care of the people and my family is what got me through. But um, I think people in town, for the most part, have taken this very seriously. You know, now that I'm allowed to sit on my porch, I can even take a walk by myself with a mask, you know, and, and mm -hmm. so, social distancing. You see very, you don't see a lot of people out, but you see family units out. So it's the people who are living together who mm -hmm. take a walk together, you know, and uh, they need to get out, they need to move around. Um, I, there are always those who um, abuse something, but I think that 90% uh, of the village really take it very, very seriously. I am very concerned about our downtown, about our restaurants, about our retail uh, establishments. You know, uh, a small town like ours is dependent on the students from Colgate, as well as uh, visitors. We have thousands of visitors every year because of Colgate, and that's what keeps them going. The fact that they are closed 
and having no revenue is um, a, a real concern. And my fingers are crossed that we can somehow help to make things um, uh, revive, you know, when that time comes. I, I'm guessing that Paul, when you were talking with Paul McLaughlin, mm -hmm. He may have told you a couple of things Colgate has done, which I think is quite remarkable. Yeah, Any, yeah. so I, I don't need to, to rehash that. But, uh, you know, the PCD, uh, the Partnership for Community Development, now has a pot of money that actually was donated by Colgate parents uh, to help the downtown, and they are going to be providing small business grants. Um, I don't know how much is in that, but I think anything that we have that we can um, help these businesses, we need to do. We need to try to be very, very proactive. It's a concern. It's a concern. Their livelihood is a concern even under the best of times. Right. I mean, and that's, that's, that's across the Hamilton, Madison County, across Absolutely. The, everyone is, is, Absolutely. is, is struggling. Uh, yeah. Talk a little bit about, in terms of the village government, you guys have obviously had some successes. We talked to everybody about, talk about what you've been really proud of and happy with, and talk about things you go, that you're learning from this and going, okay, we have to find a way to make this better in the long run. Yeah. Um, I'm, as I said before, this is going to be a duplication, but I'm just so proud of how everyone stepped up, and there is almost no... Um, a decrease in services people are making things happen we do notice i mean there are just stupid things that we do like you know we we hand fold and stuff envelopes for all of our utilities i mean that is ridiculous you know we of course now are buying a machine that yeah. <laughs> you know might do that we had a little bit of luxury of time before but we have zero luxury of time now and we actually are so busy under any circumstances we shouldn't be doing something as stupid as that and something as outdated as that. You know, I think all of our, um, this is budget time for us. We, we have just approved our budget because our fiscal year is July 1. Um, you know, everyone is bare bones in terms of what they requested, what they need, uh, what they hope for. We, uh, we have to look at things uh, very critically. Um, our tax rate, our increase is under 2%, so we're under the tax cut cap. Uh, but, you know, based on previous contracts, our raises are 2.5%. So you do the math, you can tell from that that we are really on a shoestring budget. But I think it's remarkable what we get done. But I think this process has helped us look at processes. Yeah you know, and how we might be able to streamline things or do things a little more efficiently because we have to. That's the only reason we're able to keep, keep all of our services going. One last thing, thank you again for taking the time. What do you just wanna to say to the, the people in the village, to the people in the town and the people in Madison County coming out, having it and, and being mayor? Right. Um, uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone in the village. I know that people in the village are doing what they can, for example, to help restaurants by buying things as takeout, uh, trying to support some of the businesses that are able to do that. And I want to thank uh, the residents because that has been critically important. I do want to say that this is something that we have to take, as I said before, very seriously. And I urge everyone in the county, in the town, in the village, to continue with safe practices as much as possible. And uh, it's very, very hard. And we all want to get back to whatever a normal is or a new normal. But I can't think of anything worse than opening everything up and having such a spike in the virus that we have to start all over. I mean, that would be so depressing if you thought that rather than being close to being um, in a good place, we regress and are back at square one. Right. So to me, that is my greatest fear, is that we would have to start over. We all wanna get through this as soon as possible, but I urge everyone to do it rationally and in a very safe way. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you for uh, being part of this. And we're so glad that you're healthy, healthy again. Hopefully we get to see you soon out in the park, maybe at the farmer's market. Right. 
Um, we will, on, of course. And I will say that, uh, you know, the farmers markets are allowed. Yep. Uh, we will be opening ours next Saturday, not tomorrow, but the next Saturday. Okay. Uh, only food items are permitted. So no crafters. Uh, we will have half the number because of that. We okay. will be able to spread out the booths and hopefully we can have a pattern of walking that makes it as safe as possible. But obviously, if this is something that people don't take seriously and abuse it, we would have to close it down. And I am praying we don't have to do that. And I wanna make sure, cause we're recording these. We're recording oh, right. Friday, May 1st. So when she says it's open- it's May 9th. May 9th, Saturday, May 9th. May 9th. That's All right. right. Thank you again, please be safe. And we hope to see you soon. Thanks, Matt, very, very much. Bye. Bye.